Hello, I'm Ix, and in this video, I'm going to explain the basics of screen distortions using post-process materials inside UEFN. Here are some of the examples. So let's get started. So first of all, we're going to add a post-process volume from the Place Actor window. If you don't have this window, you can add it from up here. Window, it's Place Actors. So we're going to drag a post-process volume into the scene, and down here, we're going to search for Infinite Extent. What this will do is basically make the post-process volume, you see this cube, um, affect the entire scene um, overall. To start changing the post-process material, we're going to make a new material from the content browser. New material, I'm going to call them, I'm going to call it tutorial ppm, okay, post-process material. Let's open it. Now that we're in the shading workspace, down here in the bottom left, we're going to change the material domain to post process. Okay, so the preview will go all black. That's okay. So first of all, we'll need a scene texture node. Okay, and we plug it into emissive color. We're going to get an error because we have to change the texture ID to post process input zero, and that brings back our viewport basically. So what will need to do here is edit the UVs. So you see this UV input here? We're going to distort it using a texture or a procedural node. So for that we'll need a screen position node which will give us the viewport UV of the of the current screen. As you can see it's displaying the UV coordinates and we're going to use it to distort the UVs of the scene texture basically. So we're going to minimize this, yeah. And we're going to go down here to the Epic folder, to textures and to noises. Um, every UEFM project should have this. It's it's here by default. So we're going to use this parallel noise texture here. So let's drag it in here and select the screen position node and add a component mask node here. It's going to mask the red and green channels of the UV texture given by the position of the screen. And we're going to plug it in into the texture sample UVs. What that's going to do is basically map the entire texture to just be flat on your screen. If we try to plug this in directly into UVs, it won't let us because it's using a different type of float values. So for that, we'll need another component mask. Same with RNG. Let's plug it in again. And as you can see, the error is gone. So if we see the viewport, as you can see, it's basically like a, a noise mapped in the entire image. And that's not really what we want. We wanted to just distort it a bit, not that much. We're going to add a add node, a math add. We're going to add this mask RG and we're going to add the original screen position, the masked version. And as you can see, it's still super distorted. So we're going to add a multiply node in between these two. Now I'm going to add a parameter node. You can add it by pressing one on your keyboard and left click with your mouse. We're going to plug it in here. As you can see, the effect is totally gone. So I'm going to pick a small value like 0.1. And voila, as you can see, it's fully distorted. It's basically distorting the entire screen, basi basing itself from the parallel noise we picked earlier. You can change the noise texture to a custom one you import or a, another texture found in the noises folder. As you can see, they give quite different results. This method applies to basically any input you give it that can accept the screen UVs and black and white um, images. As an example, here I have the Unreal Engine logo, the basic one, basically. It's a black and white image. And I'm going to replace it with the noise. So as you can see, my screen is slightly shifted on the part with the Unreal Engine logo. So we have distortion now done. So let's say I want to change the hue of the 
the screen, the entire screen, right in the post process material. You can do that by going into the epic folder again, going into materials, functions, then searching for hue shift, it's this material function here. You're going to drag it into the shader editor and we're going to put it right in between the scene texture and the emissive color. So plug the texture in texture and the result into emissive color. I'm going to add another parameter and plug it in here. I'm going to pick a value like 0.5. And as you can see, the colors of the screen have changed. So let's say you want to change it in viewport easily. So for that, we're going to make a we're going to convert these parameter nodes, the green ones, into a actual parameter. So I'm going to call this hue, and I'm going to call this one noise intensity. Okay, let's close this, save. We find the post process material. You right click it and pick create material instance. Okay, so we have the instance here. So if we change the values, you can see nothing is changing in the viewport. That's because we didn't pick the, the material post process here. So right here in the post process volume, you scroll right down all the settings and you can pick post process materials. You add element, you pick asset reference, then you drag in the instance. And as you can see in our viewport right now, it's it's all distorted and changed with different colors because that's what we just did with the post process. So right here in the instance, we can change the hue and the noise intensity. That's basically it for the viewport. What if you wanted to change this in game? Well, obviously that's basically the main thing you want to do since it's in UEFN. So for that, we're going to make a material parameter collection it's this asset right here i'm going to call this distortion npc we open it and right here in scalar parameters we're and right here in scalar parameters we're going to make a new element and i'm going to call it noise intensity And I'm going to make another one called hue shift. Let's save this and let's open the master material of this. So right here on these green ones we made earlier, we're going to drag in the material parameter collection. So we have it right here. So we're going to pick right here the parameter name. I'm going to pick the hue shift and drag it in here. We can get rid of this one. Now I'll copy the material parameter collection and paste it in here. Now I'm going to change the hue shift to noise intensity. And we're going to replace that with the multi the, the parameter here. Now we can get rid of it. And as you can see, it's it's, the effect is gone basically. That's because the NPC has uh, zero values in everything. So let's close this one. We're going to save. Now having this right here in the side, we're going to make a level sequence basically. I'm going to call it post process effect. So let's open it. With this level sequence asset, we're going to be able to play the post process effect in game. So we're going to add the material parameter correction to the sequencer. So we select the NPC and drag it right in here. We can close this. So now that we are in the sequencer, right here, we're going to add a parameter and I'm going to change the noise intensity. So as you can see, a keyframe gets added right where we added the the noise intensity value. So I want the effect to start like at frame 10. 
so we're going to frame 10 and we drag the keyframe right there so I go up like 10 frames change the intensity to like 0 0.05 then I go back another 10 frames and I duplicate the first one so I just select it press alt on your keyboard and drag it into 45 frames so as you can see if we play here it's going to distort the screen and go back so I wanted to stay for a bit so I'm going to pick this and duplicate this here so it's just gonna do this so you can do the same with the hue so I'm going to change the hue shift it's going to be 0 here then like 0.74 here goes back to 0 stays like 0 right there hue and 0 so this should be the effect so it distorts changes hue stays distorted goes back changes hue and stays normal so now that we have the sequence done let's see how we can trigger it in game so for that we need to go to the fortnite folder devices and we're going to find the cinematic sequence player device drag it into your scene so down here we're going to pick the sequence we just selected and to trigger the cinematic I'm just going to use a button a button device so we have it right here the button so right in the sequencer device we're going to go down here to the functions panel and select a new array element and we're going to pick the button and for the function we're going to say on interact so let's test it in game okay now that we're here in game as you can see we have the button and the cinematic sequence device so we're going to start the game and if we press the button it should play and as you can see the effect we just made is playing perfectly in game that should be the basics of how to make a post-process effect inside UEFN.